and wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can this brought away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus singing oh precious it is that flow that that makes me white as snow no I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're singing, oh, precious is that flow that, that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Certainly we do give thanks unto the Lord, uh, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And the Bible tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of, of people of like-mindedness that believe, that trust in God. And it's good to be in the household of faith with those that are aspiring uh, to do the things that be of God because you love him. And, and not because he, you love him, because he first loved you, amen, and called you out. Uh, of darkness into his marvelous light. So as we get ready to get ourselves together to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly do want to remember, as I often say, men and women and children everywhere. It's good to remember people everywhere. Amen. That the Lord will continue to save first and foremost and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And then we pray for healing and deliverance uh, that the Lord will deliver and heal uh, souls and bodies. The reason why that is, is, you know, the, the first and foremost thing on the Lord's mind is your salvation. And, you know, healing, people can go into salvation or go into heaven, maimed, halt. They can go into heaven with, with, with uh, being uh, crippled and whatever. But when you get there, you're going to get a new body. <laughs> Amen. He's going to bless you. Thank you, Jesus. And your corruptible is going to put on incorruption. But, but your soul is where you, uh, is determined where you're going to spend eternity. So we want you and God wants you uh, to be mindful of your soul. Amen? Amen? So let us pray one for another. Let us pray for deliverances and healing. Uh, let us remember um, all those that are in Christian ministries that are going through in their bodies and in the hospitals and those that are uh, sick and afflicted. Uh, pray also for those that are on the altar uh, seeking after salvation and deliverance and going through various tests and trials. We're all going through something. Amen. Child, trust and trials. We, we, you'll never get exempt from them. Amen. Okay, how spiritual you are, how much, how high you walk in the Himalayas. Amen. You still going to go through something. Amen. Thank you. It's designed that way. You know, and as long as we accept that fact, you know, one of the 
uh, mis uh, misnomers or the farces that uh, people often say is, well, when you get in the church, everything going to be good. You know, it's going to be rosy. <laughs> I'd like to join that church. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But, but it's not going to be all like that, is it? Amen. And that's why the Lord, he, he gives you grace. He gives you the Holy Ghost. He gives you what you need. He gives you a body of believers. He gives you his word. He gives, you have angels about you to put a hedge of protection about you. You got a multitude of things to help you along this way. Amen. So we thank God. You get to a point where you thank God and praise God for your tests and your trials. You, you look over, you look at them as 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 triumphs. You look at them as victories. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So whatever you're going through at this moment, look at the fact that the Lord has already uh, given you the victory. So amen. You just got to walk in it until it's manifest. Amen. So, uh, are there any other particular prayer requests? Sister Member Nancy, Pastor Hunter, Sister Nancy, and um, she has a special prayer for all of the children of the Highway, North Carolina. Amen. Yes, I got some. We got some children that are uh, seeking their vacation. They're going down to North Carolina. Be with my sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and some of their cousins. So, uh, and. So let us pray for them that the Lord will grant them a safe trip there and a safe trip back. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm kind of jealous. I like to go. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All the babies of the family know what I'm talking about. Uh, they, they, they treat you a different way, you know, when you go down there and you the baby. You see. <laughs> Amen. So are there any other prayer requests? All right. Yes. This is Jack. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 To be here and for whatever reason, you know, they they are unable to. Yes, and let us pray for those that like things are starting to open back up. Uh, people have to uh, regain uh, their confidence and regain their their footing. So um, uh, let us pray for them that the Lord will touch their minds and um, uh, that they'll regain the things that they need to regain in order to come out to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Evangelist Harrington. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes.
Yeah, no, yeah. So just pray that, because like I said, there's so much going on that it's baffling, it's coming. Yeah, come on and be saved. That's it. The Lord does have prerequisites. Yes, and um, uh, as you were talking, I was thinking about uh, the scripture that says that uh, uh, blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Because you go, you go, and you tell people the truth, you're gonna get persecuted. Amen, amen, and, and uh, we rejoice and be exceedingly glad. But you know, people need to hear it. Amen. And uh, the problem is, um, is that uh, that 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 doctrine has been put out there so often. You know, that people believe it, that you're going to go to heaven anyhow, anyway, you know. And, and that's just not the scriptures. It's just not the, the way the Bible has, has declared it. So let us, let us pray for that on that wise as well, that truth be told. Amen? All right. We want to ask the church to stand and let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless our hearts and our minds and our spirit. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known. Remember, men and women and children everywhere, Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. We ask you, Lord, that you open our hearts and our minds to receive truth, to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Ghost would move, hallelujah, in this space and in this world, hallelujah, that we would receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul. We pray, Lord, that you'll heal the few sick among us, send forth strength, Lord, bless our children, hallelujah, and all walks of life, those that are traveling over the highways and the byways, those that are even at home, Lord, Bless our children, Lord. Touch their minds and their spirit. Give them a mind to be saved. Give them a mind to be delivered. Give them a mind, Lord, to, hallelujah, to walk in your ways in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We train them up. Add glory. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come up against them, even in this age and in this dispensation. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, let your most perfect will be done. Lord, shower down your anointing. Shower down your healing. Shower down your deliverance, Lord. Create in us a clean heart, ah, Lord, and renew in us a right spirit, Lord. Clean us with your words. Salvation and deliverance and strength and honor. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, bless us, Lord, to be disciplined soldiers. Hey, glory, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah, we give you thanks in all things. For we know that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. We will bless you. We will magnify you. We will lift you up. We will give you glory. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we won't let you go until you bless our soul. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 We thank God for you. Hallelujah. We thank God for his precious son, Jesus Christ. Uh, for in him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. Hallelujah. And I want to uh, turn your attention back over to uh, the book of Ephesians uh, chapter number uh, six. And uh, we want to Go to verse 17. And we've been talking uh, about the armor, putting on the whole armor of God, amen, so that we'll be able to stand and withstand against the wiles of the enemy, the devil. And those wiles means his attacks. The enemy is always attacking us, amen. Even when we think not, he's attacking us. And the only way to stand up against him is putting on God's armor. God supplies the armor, and our responsibility is to put it on. And we've already talked about girding your loins about with truth, uh, putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, we've talked about the gospel, 
uh, shodding your feet with the gospel of peace. And we've talked about uh, the helmet of salvation. And now today, uh, our subject we're going to talk about tonight is the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit, uh, which is the word of God. And that's coming out of Ephesians chapter uh, 6 and verse 17. And it says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the word of God. And so tonight we're going to talk about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oftentimes, uh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, he'll drop a word uh, in our heart, uh, especially in the time of trouble, in the time of temptation. He'll drop a word in our heart. And that word that he drops in our heart, uh, the Bible calls that the rhema word, a rhema word. And a rhema word is a word that is given to you that is very powerful. And if you obey it and submit to it, you're able to overcome the temptation. You're able to overcome the enemy. Amen? So, so when we talk, talk about a rhema word, amen, it will have incredible power to drive back the enemy. Only the word of God uh, that's anointed is able to drive back the enemy. And what I mean when I say when it's anointed, I'm talking about spiritual warfare. God will give you a word uh, in the midst of struggle, in the midst of temptation, yes. that if you quote it, if you obey it, yes. it's able to drive back the enemy. It has that kind of power. It has that kind of dunamis, that uh, an authority to drive back the enemy. Because there's no other, there's no other weapon, there's no other power that is able to drive back the enemy other than the word of God. So Paul, Paul here in the scriptures, he's always liking uh, the armor of God uh, to a Roman soldier. A Roman soldier. And uh, uh, I'm coming to realize and understand why he is liking it to a Roman soldier. Because in Paul's day, uh, those Roman soldiers, they were uh, ruthless. They were uh, skilled in the art of warfare. And uh, uh, what I'm coming to understand is, is that, that the, the fact that uh, they were able to build an empire. They were able to build an empire not because they were the, 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 the most in number, but because they were well disciplined in warfare. And they knew how to fight. They knew how to fight. And, and, and it's not all about uh, going head up with the enemy. Uh, it's not about that. Uh, it's not about, they didn't win all their wars by going uh, fist to cuff and head up with the enemy. Yes, they, they won a lot of wars by fear and intimidation. Amen? Fear and intimidation. Y'all know how uh, sometimes when, when we get afraid and we get scared, we draw back. Uh, the, the Roman soldiers, they knew how to use fear and intimidation to wherein when they marched into a city, they just laid their weapons down. They just stopped fighting. Uh, and, and sometimes they, they would have strategies and, and besiege a city wherein they, they cut off the food line, they cut off the water supply and wait them out until they become weak as desert dust and go in and overtake them. Amen. They'll, they'll surrender. They'll give up. Y'all remember uh, when uh, uh, it was President Bush, the father, when they went over there to Iran or Iraq and they bombed the heck out of them. <laughs> and then uh, all of a sudden you see all of them coming up with their hands up, throwing their hands up. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't fight that war on the ground, sending all the ground soldiers in. They just bombarded them. 
Amen. And all those people, they gave up. They sent flyers in there telling them how to give up. And they was uh, casting down their weapons. And they, they didn't lose any American lives in that war. It was a war, but it was the strategy. Amen. It was the strategy that got it. Amen. And, and when we're dealing uh, with the Roman soldiers, they were skilled in uh, 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 a lot of different weapons. You know, they, they were skilled in, and they had clubs that they were skilled in. They had axes that they used to fight. They had uh, those long spears, uh, javelins that they used uh, to attack the enemy. And they had uh, uh, that club with the with the uh, ball and chain on it, you know, to, to get them, to, to, to attack them. And they, they also had a sword, amen? And uh, the, the, the thing about this particular sword, they, they, they trained with that sword uh, more often than they trained with any other weapon. They trained a couple times a day with that sword. And that sword was not like one of those long swords you see people using in fencing, but the sword was more so a dagger, a dagger, a dagger. And they would use that sword, if you think about it in your own mind, that, 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 that uh, what the scripture said, what Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But that, that word wrestle dealt with hand-to-hand -hand combat. And, 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 and they used that sword when they were in close encounters with the enemy so that they can be able to overtake them. When you're thinking about spiritual warfare, it's a close encounter with the enemy. It gets up front and it gets personal that you have to overtake him to get an advantage over him. Amen? Because the enemy is always trying to look to get an advantage over you. Amen? So you've got to look at using God's strategies. That's what the definition of warfare is. The strategies that God uh, 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 allows us to get an advantage over the enemy. And what are you saying, Pastor Quinn? That as the Roman soldier was skilled in, in that using of his sword... We have to be skilled in the use of our sword, which is the word of God, huh? which is the word of God. We have to be skilled at using it in an effective way to overcome the enemy. The sword was used, it's the only weapon that is given, it's both offensive and it's defensive. Uh, the rest of those weapons, uh, the armor, is, 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 is offensive weapons to protect us. Uh, the sword can be used as an offensive weapon, but it's mostly used as a defensive weapon to protect you. So, so they would practice on a regular basis on, on how to use their weapons so that they would have confidence when they went in to overtake an enemy. It's not, it wasn't, I want y'all to catch it. It wasn't in the number of how many people that went over into battle with them, but it was how skilled they were in how to overtake them. It's not about number with God. Uh, it's never, never think it's about number with God. It's about skill and wisdom with God. Amen. The more you know and the more proficient you are uh, in the word of God, the more successful you will be in overcoming the attacks of the enemy. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Because you got to, you got to realize that, that, that this devil, uh, that the enemy that, that, that tries to overtake us, uh, oftentimes, you know, he'll use different tactics uh, to, to, to weaken us. I mentioned uh, the fact that uh, uh, they used to wait them out until they became weak uh, and, and shut down their supply lines until they became weak and overtook them. And when that, when that thought dropped in my mind, I said, look at the devil, look at the devil, look at the devil. When, when people stay away from the household of faith, when they stay away from the church, uh, what's happening? They're, they're getting weak. 
Amen. They're not, they're not, they're, they're missing out on their supply line. Amen. They're not, they're not being built up on their most holy faith. They're not receiving the, the fellowship that's, that's needed. Amen. To, to help build us up huh? on our most holy faith. You follow me? And, and, and after a while, the person will get weaker and weaker and have it in their minds that, man, well, I don't really need to go to church. I, I, I think I'm all right. When, 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 when they're, 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 they're uh, praying for the enemy. Amen. We've got to be careful. we got to be careful uh, that the enemy doesn't cut off our supply, not only to the church, but cut off our supply to Christ. Cut off our supply to prayer. Cut off our supply to fasting. Cut off our supply to the word of God. Uh, to occupy our minds and, and get us in a, a position wherein uh, we're covered about many things, just like Martha. Amen. But we got to be like Mary. Amen. Uh, who, who, who desired the better part. Amen. Desired the good thing. Amen. Set at the feet of Jesus. But, but that's a tactic of the enemy. Amen? To, to, to get you weak, to get you divided, to get you separated. Amen? We got to even guard our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, wherein we don't allow the enemy to put evil thoughts in our mind about our brothers and our sisters, about conditions and situations where we become offended. Amen? Thank you, Lord. We all, uh, that's why forgiveness swings both ways. Amen? You're going to offend me, and I'm going to offend you. Uh, that's just a part of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's where forgiveness comes in. Amen. Uh, that's why God made it, made it so prevalent about forgiveness. It's a weapon. It's a weapon of our warfare to be able to forgive. Amen. God made it so, so necessary when he said that if you don't forgive your brother or sister, neither will I forgive you. Amen. Uh, that's, how, that's how important that weapon is. God motivates us. <laughs> God motivates us to forgive because I don't ever want God to separate me. I don't ever want God to, to cut me off. I don't, I don't want ever want God to, to say, uh, depart from me, Quinn, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That punishment, just like Cain said, is too great for me to bear. I couldn't bear that burden. Amen. Knowing what I know to spend eternity in hell. Uh, my God, come on here, somebody. Uh, we know too much. <laughs> Jesus is too great. Uh, my God. And, and, and we have to realize that, that, that the enemy has, has tricks. Uh, he has schemes. And, and, and the word of God, it exposes his schemes. It exposes his plots. Amen. And uh, that's what the scripture means when it says we've got to be wise as serpents uh, and harmless as doves. And what he means by that, if you look at a serpent, it's cunning. Amen. It's wise. It's decisive. Amen. And, 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 and you separate all the, the evil that's connected to uh, what we call the serpent, the devil, uh, and look at uh, some of the qualities that are mentioned even of Jesus Christ when he said, be wise as serpents and harmless ever does. He said, be wise in the scriptures. Amen. Be decisive huh? Huh? in your, in your motives and in your actions. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so that scripture there, it says, uh, uh, the sword uh, and take uh, the helmet of salvation. And notice it says, and it's, it's an inference in, Taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And when Paul was, was looking at the scripture in reference to the Roman soldier, uh, he was thinking more so about the lessons, about the training uh, that they would gain uh, from, 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 from being uh, in their exercises to be able to use their soul. And uh, those, those lessons that they would gain would be how to use it in combat. Amen? They would practice uh, uh, on each other so that they would be confident 
in skill when they go into combat. They would, they would know how uh, 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 to fight. Now, when I said that, I'm saying this, that when they uh, fought with a sword, they didn't take that sword uh, to cut and to slice. They took the sword to thrust because, because uh, 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 cutting and slicing would only wound the individual. Uh, they, they think, boss, we've got to get this thing over quick. Uh, at least you get me. Uh, I got to get you before you get me. Amen. So, so, so they practice thrusting. Uh, and, and their thrusting that their practice was to hit the vital organs. Amen. Uh, and, and when I was studying that, it said all you needed to go into somebody is two inches. And then get them, get, get that weapon in them two inches and you got them. Amen. Just two inches, two inches. Uh, they, they studied this out. Uh, uh, just stab them, uh, thrust them two inches and you got them. Amen. It'll, it'll serve as a mortal wound. Uh, so, they, so their tactic was uh, not, not to slice, uh, not, not to dice, but their tactic was to thrust. Amen. So that they would, they, would, they would get that fight over quick. Amen. So that they would get the advantage over the enemy. That's the mentality that we have to have. We cannot be in warfare fighting the devil, oh get that devil, oh leave me alone devil, oh, oh devil, uh, and, and give space, the Bible says, give room to the enemy. That's, that's like slicing, amen, giving space and room to the enemy. You got to cut his head off, uh, you got to get him uh, before he gets you, uh, because his tactic is to kill, steal, and to destroy. Your tactic with the enemy is to, is to destroy him, amen, to stop him, amen, to overcome him. And the way to overcome him is through the reign of word of God, amen. Y'all with me tonight? Thank you, Lord. So, so, so they were taught then not to cut, but they were taught to thrust. They were taught to go after the vital organ and, and put at least two inches of cold steel in it. Amen? Hallelujah. Like, that's what it means by the two-edged sword. Amen? Cut going in and cut going out. Amen? So that they can, they can, they can kill the enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and that's the mentality we have to have uh, going into battle. Uh, that, 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 that I, that I got to be quick. Huh? I gotta be quick. And what I gotta use, it has to be powerful. Yes, sir. Huh? So that so that it can it can do this most damage huh? with its least effort huh? as, as it can take. Uh, and that's what that, that word of God is. Uh, that's what the word of God is. That's what the word man, I'm gonna hold it go. That's what the word of God is. It's quick. Hallelujah. Now, 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 now. When, when Paul here is talking about the, the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, uh, he wasn't talking about what the Bible calls the logos. There's, there's the logos. That's the word of God that, that, is, that, is, that, that created everything that pertains to life and godliness. The, the general word of the Lord. Amen. Let's let's look here. Uh, uh, go with me. Uh, uh, Ella, can you read for me? That's the uh, 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 second Timothy, my God, chapter uh, number three. And uh, well, hold. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, say hold on. Amen. Go to go with me to uh, Saint John chapter uh, number one. Second Timothy one. No, I'm sorry. Go to. Uh, John, John, chapter number one, and verse number one. 
Chapter number 3 and verse 16. Uh, 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 start with verse 15. And that from a child that thou hast known the holy scriptures, uh -huh. which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now that's Logos right there. That's the definition of Logos. Amen. The, the holy scriptures as a whole. That's able to do what? Make you wise. Amen. Uh, the scriptures, the word of God, is able to make you wise unto salvation. Uh, Paul said, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He's talking about logos. Amen. In general terms, the word of God. Amen. Now finish reading. What does it say? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now the key to that is, notice what it said, all scripture. Amen. All scripture is what? Given by inspiration of God. It's, it's, it's God breathed. It's God inspired. Uh, that's where we get the word logos from. It's God breathed. It's God inspired. You should have a general knowledge of the word of God. Amen. Uh, why? It'll tell you why. Read. And is it profitable for doctrine? Now notice, this word, God's word, the Holy Bible, is profitable, it has profit in it for doctrine. That doctrine deals with, 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 with teachings that are specific to the body of Christ. It deals, you should know what, what, uh, the doctrine of baptism. You should know the doctrine of salvation. You should know the doctrine of the gospel. You should know the doctrine of faith. You should know the doctrine of healing. You should know the doctrine of forgiveness. You should know the doctrine uh, of eternal life. Amen. These are doctrines that you should know. Amen. Um, you should know the doctrine of Jesus Christ. What do you mean? The doctrine that he taught. Amen. You should also know the doctrine of Moses. Amen. Moses was a teacher. Amen. And what he taught. Amen. Uh, you should know these doctrines. Amen. And these doctrines are, are beneficial to you because they establish you in the kingdom of God. Amen. God, God, God's kingdom is made up of his laws and of his, and of his word. Amen. When you, when you have God's word in you, and you have God's laws within you, the Holy Ghost abides in you to make those words alive, which makes you a part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You, you don't have his word, you don't have his kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. You don't have the word of God in you, you're not dwelling and operating in the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. All right. All right. It's profitable for doctrine. Read it. Reproof deals with, with, with strong correction. Amen. God's logos is given to you for strong correction. Amen. And you know, when Paul, he was talking to the uh, Galatian church, and he said, if anybody brings any other gospel to you uh, other than what we preached unto you, he said, let them be a curse. And then he said it again. Amen. And, and, and because he had emphasis on it the way he said it, he was reproving them, saying, now, I told you that if anybody brings any other gospel to you, let him be a curse. Uh, that's, that's reproof. 
You follow me? Thank the Lord. And, and you take that a little bit more serious. Uh, my God, we're teaching up in here tonight. Hallelujah. And, and, that's, and that's what the word of God is. You know, it's like, it's like a mother or a father scolding their child, putting them, putting them in their place so that they can be better people. So that they can uh, 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 straighten out their behaviors and their actions. Amen. Reproof. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. My God. All right, read what's it said. For correction. For correction. Now that correction is, is, is a little bit more milder. Amen. That correction is a little bit more milder than reproof. But it, but it carries the same weight or the same connotation. Amen. To straighten out behavior. We need a lot of straightening out, though. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Come on, be honest with yourself. Amen. You live with yourself. Huh? <laughs> you, know, you know what you need. Uh, uh, hallelujah. All right. Now, 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 we also, this word, will tell you and instruct you on how to live right. Amen. How to live right. That's Logos. We're talking about Logos right now. Amen. The Logos will teach and tell you how to live right. Amen. Uh, be a good saint. Be a good person. Be a good follower of Christ. Won't the word teach you that? Uh, so isn't there a benefit to us studying the word of God? Yeah. Uh, let me, I read what's it said. Let the man of God uh -huh. make it perfect. Uh-huh. Thoroughly furnished yeah. all good works. Now notice, he said that the man of God, and there is gender neutral, if you allow me to say it, man or woman of God, may be what? Thoroughly furnished. May be, may be thoroughly furnished. Uh-huh. Okay, that the man of God may be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect meaning mature. Uh, 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 we come to God uh, in the initial phases uh, immature in our thinking. I don't care if you're 40 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, 20 years old, but when you first initially come to the Lord, you're, you're, you're a neophyte. Amen. You're ignorant. Uh, uh, and you're immature in your ways. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And God's word is given to you to help to mature you. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, we come to God with a lot of insecurities. Am I right? Amen. A lot of insecurities. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know uh, why they didn't pick me. They, they picked everybody else. They didn't, pick, they didn't call my name. Huh? You follow what I'm saying? Uh, why, why, why is everybody picking on me? You know, why, why I got to go through this? That's immature thinking. You follow? Uh, 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 dealing with our husbands, dealing with our wives. We are immature dealing with people, dealing with saints, uh, even on our job. You follow? The Logos teaches us uh, how to deal with certain situations and conditions so we can deal with them in a godly and mature way. Amen? Immaturity. God, God wants you to grow up. Amen? Be able to take something. <laughs> you finally don't always be offended. Uh, offenses must come. When you realize that offenses are going to happen, amen, when they happen, don't be surprised. I say, what took you so long? Huh? Huh? You follow me? Thank you, Lord. So, so when people offend you, uh, you know how to respond. You know how to react. Uh, that, that, that because uh, uh, somebody offended you in the church, you don't walk away from Jesus. Uh, you don't walk away from the Lord. Uh, people offend you on your job all the time. Do you walk away from your job? Huh? Do you give up? <laughs> Go and say, oh, well, they offended me. I, I'm, I'm not coming. Uh, no, you show up. Uh, thank you, Lord. So, so how much more the body of Christ? Uh, how much more the church of the living God? Uh, thank you, Lord. So, so, so you know, uh, 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 this is what the Logos, it teaches us. Amen? It's profitable. Amen? The Logos teaches us righteousness. It corrects us. It instructs us. Amen? It's God-breathed. It's God-inspired. So that the man or woman of God may be perfect. And what else? And desire. May be perfect and thoroughly furnished. Now, that word thoroughly furnished means 
that, that you are fit for every situation. Amen. Uh, God's word will cause you to be fit uh, for every situation. Whatever comes in your way, you're able and, and fit enough to, to be able to go through it. Paul put it this way. Uh, whatever state I am in, uh, I know how to abound and I know how to be a base. Amen. I know how to live above my circumstance and I know how to humble myself uh, beneath the mighty hand of God. Uh, I'm thoroughly furnished. I'm, I'm well rounded. Uh, I was talking uh, to Lottie today about, about college and, and about uh, uh, going to a liberal arts college. And a liberal arts college is designed to give you a well rounded education so that you'll be able to go in and out before any and everybody to have conversations. A technical school or trade school is just mostly focused in on that profession. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so the word of God, this logos, huh, it, it gives you a well-roundedness. Amen. So that you'll be able to deal with everybody in every situation. Huh? Loose here saying, I can't deal with her, I can't deal with him. Huh? I lose here with that. Hallelujah. You, you have to get into your word. Amen. And, and build yourself up. Uh, hallelujah. So you can be, live peaceably as much as I think you with all people. Uh, that's what this word does for you. It builds you up. Hallelujah. It, it, if you get so confident in this word, you can walk out looking for a fight. Uh, looking for confrontation. I'm uh, uh, ready. Hallelujah. Let, say, Lord, I'm ready. Hallelujah. I'm ready. My God, I'm ready, Lord. Hallelujah. Looking, 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 looking. Thank you, Lord. Looking. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Looking for an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. Looking for an opportunity to lift up the name of the Lord. I'm looking for an opportunity to, to, to abstain from ungodliness and, and unworldliness and, 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 and worldly lust. Looking for that opportunity. Hallelujah. My God. My God, that's what this word does. Yes, it does. Amen. It inspires you. Yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. This word inspires you. Uh, if you want to get inspired, read your word. Uh, if you want to, if you want to get a changed mind, be not conformed, but being transformed by the renewing. That's logos. It renews your mind. Uh, it changes your mind, uh, and it inspires you uh, to live right. It inspires you to live hope. I, 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 you look for opportunities to, to show off Jesus. You look for opportunities to live right. Uh, you look for an opportunity. They tell you, hey, uh, uh, I stole this uh, and I want to give it to you. You say, oh, no, hallelujah. Hey, you know, you go take that back to where you got it from. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get that to me. You're looking for an opportunity. Hallelujah. And to, to shine. Amen. To tell them about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what this word does for you. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can't wait uh, for Bible study. You can't wait for Sunday school. You can't wait, hallelujah, for, for the preaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because you know it's your lifeline. You, you've got a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. And God said, if you hunger and if you thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. That's Logos. Oh, that's the power of Logos. Oh, it gives you a hunger. It gives you a thirst. It gives you a desire. Hallelujah. And an insatiable desire. You want to you wanna eat it up like, like biscuits and honey. <laughs> hallelujah, my God. I want it. Uh, I want it in the morning. I want it in the evening. I want it in the noonday. I want it. I want it. I want it. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, my soul, uh, he says, as the deer panted after the water brook, so panted my soul uh, after the old God. Hallelujah. Yo, yo, you can't wait. Hallelujah. To an godly encounter. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's Logos. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's, and that's what that. Read that scripture again, Pastor Doug. What's it say? Let the man of God may be perfect, uh -huh. thoroughly furnished nah. with all good works. Now, when it's talking about good works here now, it's talking about you have, have been inspired by the word, by God. 
And, and what I offer, I kind of went ahead of myself. You, you're looking for something to do good. Amen. You can't wait to perform good works according to the word of God. Amen. Thank you. That's what, that's what Logos does. It's more of a teaching, instruction, and correction. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so that you can, you can be righteous in your daily living. Amen. That's what Logos is. Y'all with me? Yeah. So y'all understand what Logos is. Yeah. Amen. So, so, so when Paul, when he was referring in the book of Ephesians, amen, chapter number 6 and verse 17, uh, he was talking here about rhema word. Amen. Rhema word. Hallelujah. And rhema word is what you use in combat, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, with the enemy. Totally different. Amen? Totally different. In the beginning, I said that, let's go over here. Uh, let me give you a definition of, of uh, bring a word. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, chapter number four, and verse number 12. Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 12. For the word of God is quick uh -huh. and powerful yes. and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. Piercing even this and the dividing asunder of soul and spirit yes. and of the joints and marrow. Uh-huh. Now let's unpack this just for a moment. Now he's talking about uh, the rhema word. A word that, that God downloads and gives you at the moment of testing trials and tribulation when you're going up against the enemy. Amen? And this word that he gives you uh, is explosive. Uh, it's powerful. It's able to repel the enemy of off of you. And, and, and we talked about it like being that dagger when you're in the fight with the enemy. Notice, he said, for the word of God is what? Quick. Quick, that means it's alive. Amen? God's word is alive. Huh? It has elements of life in it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And then he said it's what? Powerful. And that word powerful there is, is really what the, what, what the rhema is. It's powerful. Amen? It's when you use it, uh, when you use the word of God in spiritual warfare, it becomes a powerful weapon to overtake the enemy, to overtake the devil. Amen? Now, notice what it says. It's what? Quick and it's powerful. And it's what? Sharper than any two-edged sword. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The two-edged sword is, 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 is sharp because it's, it, it's powerful and sharp because it goes in and it cuts. And when it comes out, it cuts. Amen? Two-edged sword. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And it's, and it's able to do a, a damage... Hallelujah, very quickly and decisively. Amen? Now notice, notice, notice what I told you about uh, uh, slicing. Now, you can go and, and fight the enemy uh, with the Logos, but you'll only slice them. Amen? You'll only slice them. But what God wants you to do, take the word that he gives you, the rhema, and handle your business. Thrust them. Amen? When he gives you a word, a rhema word, which is totally different, uh, it's a word that is meant for warfare for you to overcome the enemy. Now, you can know general scriptures and that's fine and dandy uh, for the, what we 
back in the scriptures, amen, about it's profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Huh? But that's not going to kill the enemy. You've got to have the rhema word. So in your arsenal, you've got to have some word in you to repel the enemy. Amen? You got to know some scriptures to repel the enemy when he comes to attack you in a certain area. You just can't use the logos huh, to repel the devil. You'll only cut them, <laughs> wound them, and make them mad. <laughs> but you want to kill it after you allow me to say, I know you can't kill the devil. I wish we could. He'd be already dead. <laughs> but 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 you gotta you gotta know how to get him up off of you. Amen. Amen. To seize him. And you've got to know, I want y'all to hear me tonight. You've got to know some some rhema word. Amen. That's right. yes, sir. Some rhema scriptures. Amen. Not the cutting, but the thrust them through to get them up off of you. Y'all with me? Yeah. Notice what it said. The word is quick and it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, even dividing the soul asunder, the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrows, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's that, that's that rainbow word. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, let's, let's look here then. Let's, let's go to the book of Luke. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. The book of Luke, chapter number uh, four. And I want our reader to begin reading at verse number one. This is Jesus and him dealing with the enemy. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. returned from Jordan yes. and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, if you go fighting this warfare, you got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And being full of the Holy Ghost uh, doesn't simply mean you have the Holy Ghost, but being full of the Holy Ghost is a connotation is that you're being led by the Spirit. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's what being full of the Holy Ghost means. Not that you shouting and you singing and you, 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 you cutting the rug. That ain't it. Being full of the Holy Ghost means that you're being led by it. Amen? That's a big difference there, isn't it? Being led by it. Amen? Being led by the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost to lead you. I want the Holy Ghost to guide you. Amen? Uh, and sometimes the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in the back. <laughs> it ain't just going to hide you, shield you. Uh, it wants you to fight. Amen. <laughs> Come on in, somebody. Uh, Jesus was led into the wilderness for what purpose? To be tempted of the devil. The Holy Ghost ain't intimidated by the devil. Uh, we ought not be intimidated by the devil. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Uh, there's, there's one of those ramas. Uh, he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a what? Sound mind. That's one of those, those rainbow words. When you're getting ready to go into battle, you're strapping on your gear, and the enemy telling you, I'm going to slay you, I'm going to kill you. Uh, you say, huh, God ain't giving me the spirit of fear, uh, but the Lord is giving me power, love, and a sound. David, when he went up against the devil, uh, have y'all ever read that scripture? When David was getting ready to go against Goliath, I said the devil, but when he was getting ready to go against Goliath and, and Goliath said one thing and David counted it with another thing, amen, that was David. Uh, 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 though the enemy threw his weapon, David was thrusting at him the raver, amen. I'm telling David, look, devil, I, I, I keep calling him the devil. He's talking about uh, uh, Goliath. He said, I'm going to slay you. I, I'm going to take off your head. <laughs> oh, you follow me? 
And, and, and Goliath said, oh, you coming at me, you sitting like I'm some dog. You sitting this, this boy out the meeting with a stick. <laughs> you finally trying to crush David. Uh, but David, he came back at the devil with rainbow words. Uh, you can't allow the enemy to, uh, to intimidate you. Come back at him with rainbow words. Y'all know some of y'all smart mouth. Uh, <laughs> y'all can wear shoes. I, I know you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all know how to use your tongue. Use your words. <laughs> Come at that devil. Uh, let that devil know uh, that you trust in your God. Uh, that's the rhema. Amen. That's the rhema. Boast in your God. Boast in his ability. Boast in his power. Boast in his anointing. Boast in his track record. Amen. David, he would have been, he said, when Saul tried to, uh, the devil tried to attack David through Saul. Tell him, uh, you too young, you can't go up against this man of war. Amen. You're just a lad. You're ready at that. <laughs> uh, but David said, uh-uh, I got a testimony. Uh, my rhema says, I got a testimony. I fought with lions. I fought with bears. And, and this, this uncircumcised Philistine, he's going to be like one of him. Uh, that's how you got to pose. That's how you got to use that rhema. Uh, uh, hand to hand combat. Uh, and when you step out on God, uh, like, like David stepped out on God, took a simple rock. David threw that rock in the air. God grabbed the rock. Hallelujah. And shoved it in the enemy's head. Hallelujah. When you step out on God, the weapon that he gives you, he'll grab it. He'll grab it. And give you the victory. You ought to give your God a praise. Hallelujah. And notice, notice, David, he threw that rock by faith. Hallelujah. When you operate by faith, miracles can happen. When you operate by faith, God will slay all your giants. Hallelujah. My God, my God. How many giants you got? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God. Uh, I told myself, I told myself tonight, I said, Quinn, don't get all excited. Just teach the Bible class. But it's just like fire and shut up in my palms. Hallelujah. My God, this thing is real. Amen. I said this thing is real. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, God will fight with you. Uh, God will fight for you. Uh, hallelujah. God, God will make the enemy behave. Hallelujah. And, and that's what he did for David. Amen. He used the, the, the rainbow word on the enemy. Amen. The, the, the enemy, uh, Goliath, the Philistines, they paralyzed, amen, uh, uh, the army of Israel. He, they used their words. They weren't fighting. Huh? They were only fear and intimidation. That's how the enemy operates. He operates by fear and intimidation. Huh? The scripture says in the book of uh, 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 Ezekiel that when we see the devil really as he is, we're going to say, this is him? Huh? That, 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 that terrorized the nations? Huh? You're going to be surprised at what you see. But he's smoking mirrors. Amen? Fear and intimidation. He is a, he's a wannabe. Amen? He's an imitator. You follow me? Hallelujah. Imitator. A wannabe. Huh? He's not the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. He's not the king of kings and the lord of lords. Huh? He's got to get permission. Amen. He's got to get permission. You live right, he got to get permission from you. Huh? You act right and live right, he got to get permission from you. Y'all with me? Warfare. We're talking about warfare. Yes, sir. Talking about the enemy. Know your enemy. Yes. No, know your enemy. Don't underestimate your enemy. Huh? Don't underestimate him. 
God has given him certain abilities. Amen. So he can be a formidable foe. <laughs> but 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 not as powerful. Huh? As greater as he that is in you. Huh? That's Rama. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you believe that tonight? When you go into battle, do you believe that? Hallelujah. Another Rama is trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's Rama. I, I was, I was, Lord help me here, Holy Ghost. I was, I was, I got up one morning and uh, just by chance, I, I read a scripture that said, uh, don't be afraid of sudden destruction. Right? That's what the word said. And I said, thank you, Lord. And uh, I went about my day. I can't even tell you what happened. Something happened. Amen? And that scripture popped right back in my mind. Oh, don't be afraid of sudden destruction. That was God's rhema. Gave me peace. Uh, to where I didn't even know what the fight was. <laughs> Gave me peace. That passes all understanding. Amen. That word came back to me. Amen. That's the rhema word. God will give you a rhema word. Huh? And, 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 and when trouble hit, it'll bring it to your mind. And it'll be quickened and be powerful. Amen. And I remember, I remember distinctly that, that even in prayer, uh, when, when, when that thing tried to come upon me, that sudden destruction, I reminded it of the word. And my anxiety level went back down. Follow? That's how you fight the enemy. That's how you fight the devil. You can't call him a green-eyed demon. Huh? You got to fight him with the word. Amen? Y'all with me? You got to know some rhema. Amen? Because he's coming. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at it. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Pass, will you read uh, Luke 4 1? And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, he was full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, uh -huh. and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. All right, he was, he, he was in Jordan. That's where he got baptized. Amen. And the Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. Amen. And then the Spirit took him into the wilderness uh, for 40 days for a fight. Amen? To be tempted of the devil. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, read. Being forty days tempted of the devil, mm -hmm. and in those days he did eat nothing. Mm -hmm. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. All right, so he was caught up in fasting and praying, uh, really focusing in on his mission and his assignment, because that's what he went after after he came uh, out of the wilderness, he preached, repent ye, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When John preached that, uh, repent ye, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he was saying that it's coming. When Jesus made that statement, he was saying that it's here. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. All right, read. Let's say. And the devil said unto him, uh -huh. If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now notice, the devil speaks. Amen? The devil will talk to you. Won't he talk to you? <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and on the surface level, he's telling Jesus, if you think about it, well, what's, what's harm in that? What's harm in making stone bread? Huh? That's how the enemy does. Huh? He'll come at you with some unseemingly no harm thing. And, I, and the devil's shrewd. He'll use your inside, your, your internal voice to make it, make it think like that's your own mind. That's your own thoughts. He studied you. Huh? Not him himself, but he got him. Amen? Y'all with me? I'm teaching up in here today. Now, a lot of stuff that comes to your mind ain't your mind. Huh? And, you know, some of that stuff is your mind. But, but not everything. Let's be honest. Not everything. Amen. I'm standing. But, well, I'll let it go. But but yet, uh, the enemy will 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 talk to you. Amen. 
and, and bring you some no harm stuff. But, but with the devil, it's always a trick. Anytime you obey him, he got you. Amen? That's why Jesus said you should know the truth. Uh, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Amen? You don't want to obey the devil in no thing. Am I right? Uh, so Jesus, he recognized the devil. Amen? You got to recognize the devil. Amen? Amen? You got to know, Satan, this is you. This is you. Satan, the devil is shrewd. Don't be, be, be slow to speak. Uh, be swift to hear. Amen? Be slow to run. You follow? And, and that can be used. Somebody come tell you something. So and so, so and so did something to your child. Who are you off to the races? You don't know the story. You don't know if it happened that way. You don't know if it went down that way. Huh? The next thing you know, you got somebody hemmed up, threatening to kill him. Huh? And then the police are being called. Off of what somebody said. You follow? You know, and I got to put, uh, 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 you didn't already cuss them out. <laughs> Not slow to speak. Swift to hear, slow to wrap. That's a tactic of the enemy. You follow? Amen. The devil knows what you care about. Somebody hit Boomer. Woo! -hoo! What do you mean, somebody hit Boomer? <laughs> she'll jump up off the chair and go see. I ain't said she'll do no evil, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, the devil knows. Huh? Somebody hit my little car out there, I'll be like, hey, what you do? <laughs> you follow me? Huh? That brother, they got a nice car. Huh? Hey, you know, he looking at me, give me that side eye. <laughs> but we know, he knows what we care about. That's what our grandchildren, that's what our children, that's what our bank account. Huh? You follow me? You gotta be slow to react. Yeah. Amen. Be patient. Yeah. Wait. You follow me? Don't believe every tale. Yeah. Uh, Amen. Yeah. I don't know who I'm preaching here to today, right yeah. now, but don't believe everything. Yeah. Let everything be known in its time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. <laughs> we put a praise on that so you can receive it. Thank you, Lord. Notice. Notice. And the devil said unto him, what did he say? And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. All right, so the devil uh, said unto Jesus, huh, Command these stones so I can be made bread. Amen? Oh, that's an unseemingly uh, 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 thing to do. But it has, it has implications to it. You follow me? You just can't obey the devil. It has implications to it. You follow me? Now, what did, what, did, what, did, what did Jesus say? And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now note, the devil brought the suggestion to Jesus Jesus hit him with the rhema. What was written? What did he say? It is written. You've got to fill yourself up with rhema word. When you study your scriptures, fill yourself up with some rhema word so when the enemy comes to attack you, you don't have to be fumbling around. Well, well uh, 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 where's that? Where's it at? Uh, no, too late. He got you. Uh, have you some rhema in you? Tell the devil that it's written. Man shall not what? Live by bread alone. But by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Uh, that was a dagger in him. Amen. He was backing him up. All right, read. What's it say? And the devil... Taking him up into a high mountain. All right. Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now, notice, I, I, when I was reading and studying this, I'm saying, 
him back up. Jesus allowed uh, the devil to take him up huh, in a high mountain and to show him everything huh, in a moment of time. Thank you, Lord. But he did that for our admonition. He did that for our learning. Yeah. Amen. Read. What do you say? And the devil said unto him, uh -huh. All this power will I give thee, uh -huh. and the glory of thee. Yeah. For that is delivered in, unto me. Yeah. And to whomsoever I will give it. Yeah. If thou therefore will worship me. If you would worship me. He was tempting, trying to tempt Jesus uh, with riches uh, and power and fame and glory and honor. Ain't that what people want? Yeah. Uh, if we're honest here today, we can say that we want some of that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, but to get it uh, uh, the devil way is evil. Yeah. Amen. 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 Read. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. For it is written. Notice, there you go. That's the rhema. Huh? It is written. When the devil comes to attack you huh? and, and try to appeal to your evil, lustful desires, you got to come with that word. You can't come with your own opinion, your own thoughts. You'll lose the battle. You got to come with what's written. Something that's quick and powerful, yeah, yeah. sharper than any two-edged sword, yeah. to repel the devil. Yeah, right. What is that? It is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Yeah. And him only shalt thou serve. And him only shalt thou serve. See, he used the word to repel the enemy. You've got to use the word to repel the enemy. The raven. Not the logos, but the raven. Read. And he brought him to Jerusalem. Now, no, he keep moving Jesus around. And set him on a pinnacle uh -huh. of the temple. Put him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, uh -huh. If thou be the Son of God, uh -huh. cast thyself down from hence. Yeah. For it is written. It is written. He shall give his angels charge over him. Now him. notice, the devil caught on to what Jesus was doing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The devil will catch on to what you're doing. Uh, and he knows the scriptures better than we do. Huh? You follow me? So he'll throw some scripture at you. <laughs> huh? Thank you. He'll throw that word at you. And if you're not wise, uh, you'll obey it. So, oh, this is the word of God. Uh, when it's, when the, when the, when the, when the uh, I don't want to say, I, I'm losing this word loosely. When the author of it is the devil. And I know that the devil ain't the author of the word of God, but I'm saying that, that he's instigating it to cause you to, yeah, she said he's showing up. <laughs> he's instigating it to cause you to use it in a, in a negative way. Huh? What'd you say? I said he's the author of your action when you act on Yeah. That's bad. Am I right? So you gotta be careful. That's why you gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide. All right, read what it said. For it is written. Jesus went back to what it was written. That's the rhema. No, that's still the end of the Oh, oh, my bad. For it is written, he uh, shall give his angels charge over thee. Uh-huh. Yeah. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Wow. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Is that true? Yes, the scriptures say that. Amen. The devil knows the scripture. He'll transform himself into an angel of light. Amen. That's why you can't believe every devil. Uh, every smooth talk. Amen. Some people know that scripture. You can talk a, talk a good thing, but can't live nothing. Amen. Can't live nothing. They can talk it, but they can't live holy. Amen. I read. And Jesus answering said unto him, Yeah. It is said, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh huh. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, yeah. he departed from him for a season. Now notice, all three events, Jesus used the word to repel the devil. Yeah. 
that, that there is written to show us what we must do to repel the devil. Jesus didn't use his ideas. He didn't use his opinions. He used the word. Amen? When, 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 when Eve uh, was in her battle with the devil, the devil asked her, hey, uh, uh, what did God say about you eating up this tree? I'm paraphrasing. And she said, well, God said we shouldn't eat it, neither shall we touch it. Huh? And, 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 or at least we die. Now notice, as he did with Jesus, he tried to bring in doubt, if thou be. Huh? He brought in doubt, tried to bring in doubt, with, well, he brought in doubt with her. Huh? Thou shalt surely die. Huh? Huh? But notice, she also went off of her own opinion. You can't fight the devil on your opinion, on what Sally Sue said. You got to fight him off of the word. So you got to know the word. You got to get you some rainbow word in you. Uh, that's the sword of the spirit. It's quick and it's powerful. If you don't have the rainbow word in you, you will never defeat the enemy. He'll, 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 you'll always uh, be losing. Amen? And you can't Stomp your feet, clap your hands, jump up and down. You can't just sit there and say nothing. <laughs> uh, that's your own way of fighting. You can't defeat the enemy out of your own will, out of your own wisdom. Amen? Amen. That has no power. It has no authority. Amen? If you are going to fight, you got to have you some rain up. Amen? Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and let's go over here. One more verse of scripture. We almost done. Uh, Isaiah. Isaiah. What scripture is that? 49. Read verse 1 and 2. Listen, O oh, Isles, uh, unto me. Yes. And hearken, ye people, from far. Yes. The Lord hath called me from the womb. Uh-huh. Now, now, now he's talking about Jesus. You can put your name there too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But it's a prophecy about Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and we like Jesus. You should be little Jesus. <laughs> All right, man. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Now, the Lord. You want him to make your mouth. This should be your prayer. Lord, make my mouth like a sharp sword, a two-edged sword. Pray that prayer. Amen? So that, so that you'll be ready to encounter any battle that the enemy would bring your way. So that you can speak a word in due season. Make my mouth, Lord, a ready sword. Make it. That's what Jesus' mouth was. It's was like a ready sword. And then when the enemy came to attack him, he was prepared. Now I told you earlier that, that, that the Roman soldiers, they were skilled in their weapon. You've got to be skilled in the word of God. So that takes practice. Amen? Amen? You can't be skilled without practice. No. Amen? You just can't uh, uh, put the Bible on tape and, and, and listen to it and think you're going to have it. Huh? You just can't watch all the Bible movies and think you're going to have it. You can't, you can't come to all the Bible studies uh, and hear all the preaching and think you're going to have it. You got to get into it. You got to study it. It takes labor. Amen? Yeah. And, and it works for your good. You got to see the benefit in it. Amen? Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. You'll be fit. You'll be ready. Amen? You'll be stronger. Look at the benefit. You, you, you'll be stronger. That means that you'll have less headaches. Huh? You'll have less heartaches. You follow me? And, and, yeah, Lord, I don't want to say it, Lord, but, uh, thank you, let me hold the ghost. Uh, uh, you'll be wiser. See, that's the kind way of saying you won't be dumb. <laughs> I was going to say that, but, but you'll be wise. Amen? You don't want to be a dumb saying. Ignorant. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. You don't want to be angry. And be wise. The scriptures make you wise. Amen? And you'll be able to spot the enemy. You with me? The devil, as I said before, he's shrewd. He's tricky. And, and, there's nothing new under the heavens. Nothing. Amen? But he'll try to make it new to you. The devil will keep a person going around in the same circle. Doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, falling short. Does that make any sense? But why should he try anything new when that old stuff is working? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's not the only thing. So if you keep falling after the same trick, the same foolishness, same situation, he gonna keep bringing it back at you. But what that make you? He don't even respect you enough to bring something different. <laughs> My God. Let's be wise. Amen? And, and the only reason why people fall into the same trap is because they don't use that name up. They're trying to do it their way. Can't get the devil off your back your way. You got to use the name of word. Amen? And you got to be skilled at it. Become a ninja <laughs> in the word. Become a Navy SEAL in the word. Amen? Y'all with me? Come skill that. Brother David? I, I want to ask a question. I hope it, I hope it come out right because I got some stuff in my head and I don't know if it's going to come out right. But you mentioned practice the word of God. Yes. You, you practice by studying. Yes. You intense stir, studying. Yes. And once you study the word of God, then you put it into practice. Yes. You know, in the practice, it's, it's when your test comes, yes. you use that word to defeat the devil. And that, is that a form of practice in the word? Yes, okay. absolutely. To defeat him, to overcome him. Absolutely. And uh, your level of skill, uh, how can I say it? Lord, help me here, Holy Ghost. Your level, your level of practice makes things and warfare against the enemy more clear in the battle. God was telling me, Frank, man, I'm having a, 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 a he's claiming to be a Christian, say, with the Holy Ghost, talk, he talked, he talked like it, you know, who am I? <laughs> but, but, he said, he said, you know, I, I, I got a lot of anxiety, the enemy is always pushing my buttons, you know, and, and I got a lot of fear, and I, and I fall into a lot of traps. So, I'm listening to what he says, because I'm skilled in the word, 
I say, well, do A, B, C, and D. You have to. And I walked away. Right? To me, it made sense. To him, it did not. Why? Because he was unskilled. He never practiced it. In fact, he made me mad because he said, oh, I've done that. And I said, no, you didn't. Because if you did, you'd have won. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't do and walk in God's word and lose. It's impossible. Huh? And I didn't mind standing to his face. You know you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't do it. <laughs> Thank you. We got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta operate in this thing. See, what I said earlier about when you study this word, you should study it to the point where you want to put it in practice. You follow? Uh, uh, look at anybody in any sport. If they're in the gym 24 hours a day, they practice and they get their game on, they can't wait to game time. And they don't want to ride the oak. They want to get in the game. Amen? Amen. To use what they got. When you build yourself up in this word, uh, you can't wait. Huh? You're like, yes! <laughs> Devil, I saw you coming. Uh, and you can't wait to put the word into practice. Resist the devil steadfast. You can't wait. You follow? You see, you see your temptation coming your way because God revealed it to you. And God gave you a rain. Uh, before they get there, you practicing God's word. You follow? A lot of times, even, even myself, I'm going to be honest, even myself, Go into situations, not really thinking about this or that, but just dealing with people and dealing with stuff. And then I say something that, man, I wish I would have said that. I wish I would have said that a different way. You follow? That's the enemy. Because my mind wasn't all the warfare. Got at ease in Zion. You follow? That's how the enemy act, operates. But when you, when you come prepared, got your gym clothes on, your sneakers on, your jersey on, you come to play. Huh? When you come with your whole armor on, you come ready to fight. You're more observant. You're looking. You're, you're watching. Huh? And when he shows up, you know how to get him. That's how we got to be. Observant. Watch them. Amen? Put your armor on. Delvin? Thank you. All right. Oh, Jesus. Now, I got, I got one more thing. That's, that's, then we can go. All right? There's th three things I want y'all to consider. Amen? Three. How many things? Three. Three things I want you to consider. Three is God's uh, divine perfection. Amen? That's, that's divine perfection. Three. Jesus got up in how many days? The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost that makes what? <laughs> the divine protection. Uh, perfection. Amen? I mean, uh, well, okay. It ain't about that. <laughs> Much learning has made me mad. <laughs> all right, all right. The first thing I want you to consider that, that we should study the Bible that we may know and understand the truth in it. I want you to consider that question. Why should you study the Bible? So that we may know the truth that's in it. Because that's the only thing that's going to free you. Am I right? Yeah. All right? The second thing I want you to consider I want you to consider that we should have text, T X T S, text of scripture at command. At our command. We should have, 
we should have scripture texts at our command as Jesus did to meet any form of temptation that the devil may bring. We should have scripture text at our command. You should start out with what he's tempting you the most. You should start out what he's tempting you right now with. Amen? And you should have scripture text at your command so that you can defeat him. If you put this into practice, you'll grow in leaps and bounds. Then the third thing I want you to consider, we should not depend on our own reason or wisdom to fight the devil. Don't depend on your own reason or your own wisdom to fight the devil. Eve did that and lost. Lost big time, didn't she? Sister so Jack? You said your own reason or what? Yeah, or wisdom. Your own rational mind. Reason or wisdom. I can't come at the devil the way I want to come at him. I got to come at him with the scripture. I gotta come at come at him with as what's written. Right? So I can't I can't say, well, I've been over here 30 years and I know how to possess my vessel, so uh, I can go to the bar, you can't. <laughs> See, I use my own reason. Amen. The fact that you want to go to the bar is a problem. <laughs> You follow me? Huh? So I'm using my own reason. The fact that I'm, the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating it and trying to fix it up in my mind. Y'all know we know how to fix stuff up in our mind. Just give me a minute. I'll, I'll put some scripture together to, 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 to forgive myself and to make my actions good. <laughs> What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> and once you do it, then you'll turn around and then you've got all the action. Right. Right. And the devil will call you a fool. Sister, uh, Brother David. That's another way of justifying yourself. Yeah. In other words, you're, you're trying to make a way to do, you know you shouldn't do it, but you're trying to make a way to make it sound right to you. To you. To make you right. feel free. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Notice the scripture. The Bible says that every man is right in his own eyes. That's the scripture. And, and it's true. We justify our actions. Amen? We got to be careful. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I can't use... Uh, when you start reasoning and rationalizing with the devil... He's better than you at it. He's skilled at it. So you, you'll never be able to reason your way with the devil and overcome him like that. You've got to resist him what? And he'll what? He'll flee. That's Rhema. Amen? So we thank God for y'all tonight. Give God a praise. Amen. We certainly thank God for the Bible study. And the word, uh, now is the time for us to, to, to give. And those that are listening to me on today, uh, you have an opportunity to give through our tithing. And we thank God for you. Uh, by way of announcements, we have uh, our Night Payne State Council coming up uh, this Thursday and Friday. So we won't have Friday night prayer. Uh, the registration is $10. Amen. Dynamic speaker, uh, District Elder Daryl Fair will be our speaker for Friday night. And then on, it's on Facebook, uh, Night Pain Facebook page. Uh, uh, you'll find it. And uh, we have uh, empowerment sessions throughout the day. And then a uh, speaker at night.
And also, we have a Bible study at 3 o'clock, District Elder James Fair. Who, I mean, District Elder James Stafford will be uh, teaching that. And then on Saturday, uh, we have empowerment sessions lined up during the day starting at 11. Both days start at 11. And then we have a dynamic speaker uh, that's going to be preaching for Saturday night. All right. All right. All minds clear? All right. We thank God for you. All right, let's bless this offering. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for this offering that we're very receiving your name. Everybody say amen. 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 Wow. You trying to intimidate us. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We certainly praise God for you. Thank you, Brother Ray. Uh, you got to get now. You went with me. Oh, oh, you doing it right. My.